So I'm going to talk to you about this uh, unusual puzzle that came my way some years ago, and it's one of those things. It's not. It was not my main focus. It came in, and then I couldn't. It couldn't. I couldn't get rid of it out of my head. So, uh, and so we decided to jump right in. So first, let me test whether you can do it. Uh, what kind of? Do you think this is a right hand or a left hand? Raise your hand if you think it's. Excellent, all right, and one more. Okay, so now, so it's easy when you can lift your hand and it seems like almost everyone can do it, but the question is how, right? Um, and this turns out to be extremely unusual. So um, <coughs> back in 1975, uh, uh, Cooper and Shepard, I'll, I'll just give you a little history because what I'm going to tell you about has closely to do with the history of this unusual problem. Is uh, Even though it's obvious that we can do it, we're experts at our hands, we use them, it's not obvious actually why we know how to do this. So they, they started this hypothesis that uh, there are mirror symmetric things that we have to dis distinguish between ultra lives. For example, this is the correct K, but not that. So um, they made the simple observation, important observation, that hands are mirror symmetric as well. So maybe we recognize right hand and left hand the same way we do other objects in the world. Hands happen to be attached to our bodies, but maybe it's just the same problem. And uh, so what they did was they, they used an, uh, an experimental paradigm which they had already uh, successfully shown applies to mirror objects. And uh, the basic thing is, can we recognize an object when it's rotated? So do you think these are the same objects or different objects? Different? OK. So they are, in fact, different, right? OK. So the hard part is the rotation. So when when it's not obvious, you have to undo this rotation to figure out um, whether they're same or different. And they discovered in possibly one of the most famous findings in psychology uh, this relationship between time, uh, how long it takes for you to solve this problem. So the more, the greater the angle between these two objects, the more time it takes for you to respond. So for you, if you're not uh, familiar with this, in, uh, sec in uh, cognitive psychology, we often use this. The time it takes for you to respond is often a crucial measure of what's going on, what kind of processes may be going on. So this kind of linear, like a steady increase is very, very unusual. It's, and it's been replicated several hundreds of times. So the question is, they, they decide to simply ask, does this apply to hands as well? And uh, in their first experiment in 1975, it seemed like, yes, the answer was yes. They just showed pictures of hands, just like you did, and all people had to do was respond saying, was it a left hand or a right hand? And, uh, and they measured how long it took for you to make this decision. And they found that with angle, uh, as that hand goes from this position where it's really fast to this position, it takes you more time. And it seemed like all was over, problem solved, right? And the simple algorithm they had, which, and this is a percept, and I would like you to come back to this just a few minutes ago when you answered left or right. We will keep going back to what you experienced when you actually did that. So their hypothesis for how this problem was solved was we have an internal representation of a hand. And when you see a picture of a hand in a strange position, you imagine moving it until it matches. And if it matches, you say right, if not left. And so the more, more you have to move your hand, the more time it takes. It seems pretty simple. So where life got very complicated, and at least the part that where my interest in this problem began was an observation uh, in, an op in a paper that is, I think, maybe not forgotten, but maybe most people don't know about it. 
uh, Sakiyama is uh, in um, made this little observation that actually things were not so simple. And if you see, if you look at the time it takes to recognize a right hand versus a left hand, it turns out that they're actually mirror symmetric. So for some angles, you're systematically faster to recognize left hands than right hands, and for other angles, you are able to better uh, recognize, you're faster to recognize right hands than left hands. This is very unusual because if you think of when you make a decision, if you see an animal and you have to decide if it's a cat, it's not like uh, uh, you take, you have a different, uh, you take a different amount of time to recognize whether it's a cat or a dog. The moment you have enough information to know it's a cat, it's a cat, right? So here, the observation was it looks like you almost have to know the answer before you know the answer. And let me uh, explain what that is. So the first is why, why is there such a big difference between right and left hand? So Parsons uh, did a very elegant series of experiments to show that it actually tracks with the difficulty. That is, um, if you take, if you can try this yourself, your left hand, and uh, in certain directions, it's a little awkward to move your hand, but in certain directions, it's really easy. And for the right hand, it's actually the opposite direction. And oddly, the time it takes for you to respond corresponds to how difficult it is to actually move your hand into that position. So uh, let me give you a, So for these two positions, if you can try to put your hand in that position, for the right hand versus the left hand, it's a little awkward for the left, but it's really easy for the right. And there it's really easy for the uh, left, but difficult for the right. And it somewhat matches. It, the harder it is. So oddly, it seems like we're almost imagining moving our hands in our heads. And, but imagination is constrained by what the body can actually do even though you're just sitting there, you're not doing anything. You're just looking at a picture and saying yes or no, left or right. So this phenomenon has been, because it's more than just a trivial thing, because what if someone does not have hands? What if you're born without limbs? What if someone is paralyzed? Can they do this task? Will they show this? What happens? What system in the brain do you need to imagine moving your body in this way? So it's been a heavily... This, this phenomenon has been heavily studied. But, uh, so we'll just do a test, but here it contains the most crazy puzzle you'll hear of in a second. <laughs> okay, so just to test so that you, you're following along. Uh, would you say this is an easy position for your hand to be in? If you just try it out. And what about this one? It's fairly easy, right? Okay. So. The, the catch with this whole thing, the logical problem with this is, uh, back then I, I told you that um, the assumption was that people move something in your head, you match it with the picture you see and you decide if it's the right or left hand. But here it looks like if you see a left hand, you imagine moving your left hand. If you see a right hand, you imagine moving your right hand. You always seem to know what hand you're supposed to be moving. So the whole idea of using mental imagery to find out the answer doesn't seem relevant anymore. Something in the brain already seems to know that it's a right hand, left hand, but you somehow feel that you're doing something, you're thinking about the problem. So uh, we call this the correct hand effect. So there are now, if you think about every paper, that every experiment that shows this effect, people know the answer before they, s before they know why they know the answer. Uh, and this is, has been an observation that has been around for 38 years, and it has never been clear why. Or, and no one agrees, everyone thinks it's mental imagery. So we decided to jump right in to try and figure out in this early step before what is going on, how could the, something in your brain know that it's a right hand or left hand, and it takes so long for us to become aware of the answer. Uh, so we started off with this thing that there is no imagination that as you're sitting here, your hands are playing with your cell phone, sitting on your laps, that the brain has to know where your own body is 
while you're looking at these uh, pictures. So it's well known that the, uh, you have to keep track. The hand that you see and the hand, if you close your eyes, you know where your hands are. The brain has to keep track that it's the same hand. Otherwise, it's like uh, when, you hear, when you see lightning and you hear thunder, you have to stitch them together to say it's coming from the same place. So the brain has to keep track that uh, it's the same hand you're looking at. Um, so what we decided to do is maybe this is the magic mechanism. It's happening very fast. Let's manipulate it. Let's try to see if we can make people have strange illusions when they try to do this task. So the first is we try to mess with the experience of which hand you're using. So uh, if you look at a simple silhouette, like a shadow of a hand, the front and back are also mirror symmetric. Everything I told you about before was about right and left hand. So if you only had to decide whether you're looking at the front or back of your hand, would this awkwardness, would you ima have imagine your body moving or not? So the simple experiment we did was you would see a cue telling you, OK, you're going to see a left hand. And then you would see a picture of a, sh a silhouette of a hand in some angle. And all you have to do is judge whether you're looking at the back of the hand or the front of it as fast as you can. And you have to use your left hand. Whichever hand is being cued, you have to use that to respond. And the same with the right hand. Fairly simple. And uh, if we go by the previous stuff, if you magically know it's the left hand or right hand, these two should be identical, right? You would guess that could be a reasonable prediction. So it turns out when you see silhouettes that match the hand in the back position, like if you're looking at this, you see the effect of, if you see the for the um, uh, left hand, if it's in this position, it takes a really long time. But if it's in this position, it's really easy, and it's opposite for the right hand. But oddly, this is completely absent when you make judgments with this. So the same picture, this is the thing. The same picture, if you look at it, when it is part of the left hand, you show this unusual uh, s uh, awareness of your uh, body constraints. But the same picture when it's in the opposite hand has no effect at all. So in some sense, we have deconstructed that it's really not the entire hand. And it's essentially the trick we were using here without telling you was focusing your attention on which hand you're going to respond with and not so much playing with the picture itself. Because every time you see a trial, you're told you have to respond with the left hand or you have to respond with the right hand. And so the moment you put attention on, on the hand you're going to respond with, our hypothesis was that you're, 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 you're trying to match the current hand with the hand you're seeing on the screen. So we did it the other way around. Is Now we decide to play with the visual part of the uh, problem. So if you look at these hands, they have a lot of detail on them. There are fingernails. There's uh, texture features on the skin. Uh, but if you close your eyes and lift your hand and you know where your fingers are, you don't really care what, what color your hand is, right? You know where your fingers are, but you don't need to know these visual details. So our guess was if you are doing a match between your internal sense of where your hands are and your visual, that it will be in the shape domain. You will not need details of skin color or texture. So we did the same trick. We split them into shapes. But what we did is we trained two groups of people. One group always saw, they got a cue. First, they were told, you're going to see the back of your hand. Get ready. And then they would see only the shape. And then they had to put both together to decide if they're looking at a left hand or a right hand. And, and then they were also given one where all the information was provided together, like in a regular picture of a hand. This group replicated uh, the classic hand. So the main feature to look at, which I've marked there, is that the time it takes for you to recognize a right hand or a left hand are opposite. 
to each other. They're going in opposite directions, matching the ease or the awkwardness of the hand. But if we train you to look at the shapes first before you know which side it is, so if you see the hand, these two are identical shapes, you need to know whether you're looking at the front or back to decide if it's right or left. So we, we're training people when you see the picture to pay attention to the shape before you look at the other features. And it turns out it completely wipes out the biomechanical effect completely. So uh, with these two pieces, essentially uh, we can turn off this phenomenon that we believe may explain this mysterious correct hand effect. It's not that magical, but the thing is when you are aware of what's happening, you assume that your behavior is solving the problem, but our hypothesis is that there are these low-level detectors that are, when you're sitting there and you see the hand, there's an automatic matching that says, I see a hand, but I'm not sure why my hand is over there, and that little error signal triggers off your thinking. But it happens so quickly and without your knowing that it just, uh, all you're aware of is uh, you're thinking about the problem. So to give you a little cartoon sketch, when there's at the same time that you're receiving input from your hand, you're seeing a picture, there's something that's just directly matching and it's only when there's a large difference in position it comes into awareness of you know, that there's something wrong and you're, tr you're trying to solve it mentally. So the speed at which your, something in your brain knows it's a right or left hand is very different from when you actually consciously know whether it's a right or a left hand. So the moral of the story is you, you, it's just, uh, you don't know much about your body. It's always a mysterious thing. We're experts, we're expert hand experts. We, we use them every day. But uh, there's a lot going on with our bodies that are completely outside of our awareness. And uh, in some of these situations, uh, no amount of introspection or anything can ever figure out why, because it's happening at such a low level. That's my story. All right. <laughs>